Hello friends, this video on organisms and their surroundings part 25 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about sexual reproduction. What is sexual reproduction? It is a mode of reproduction in which two individuals, in which new individuals are formed from two parents. Now whenever we talk about sexual reproduction, two parents are mandatory. So you need a mother, you need a father. So here a male and a female needs to be involved. So what happens in the overall process is there is fusion of the male and the female sex cells. Now if we talk about human body, our body is made up of cells. Now out of so many cells inside our body, there are certain specialized cells which help in the process of reproduction. So those specialized cells are called sex cells or they are called gametes sex cells or germ cells or whatever you call them so they are the gametes so the when the male sex cells and the female sex cells they fuse together they combine together they give rise to a new organism so fusion between the male and the female gametes is important so you cannot think of sexual reproduction with just one parent you obviously need two parents now in sexual reproduction, the new individuals are not exactly identical to the parents. However, they might have certain resemblances with the parents, but they will not be exact identical. For an instance, you think of yourself. Do you think that you look exactly like your mom or do you look exactly like your dad? Maybe you have a lot of similarities. Maybe your eyes are similar to your mother, your nose is similar to your mother, your hair is similar to your mother, but maybe your skin complexion is similar to your father. So, so you will have mix of traits from both of your parents. Sometimes you resemble your mother more or sometimes you resemble your father more. All those things are possible. But two individuals will not be exactly identical to each other. So that, that's one major difference between sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Because in asexual reproduction, exactly identical new organisms are formed. But that is not the case with sexual reproduction. So this is a relatively slower mode of reproduction when compared with asexual mode. Now, which organisms undergo sexual mode of reproduction? First of all, human beings. Not only human beings and animals, but even plants also undergo sexual mode of reproduction. So plants actually can reproduce both sexually as well as asexually. So plants and animals both can undergo sexual mode of reproduction. Now when you talk about sexual reproduction in plants, flower is the reproductive organ of a plant. Now, flower contains the male or the female reproductive parts. Now, there, there are flowers which contain both the male and the female reproductive flowers. There are also certain types of flowers which contain either the male reproductive part or the female reproductive part. So, we will not get into the detail of uh, how reproduction takes place in plants. You will learn, that, learn about that in your higher classes. But uh, basically what happens in reproduction is inside the flower fusion between the male and the female reproductive part takes place. So inside the flower what happens fusion of male and female reproductive part takes place and as a result what is produced as a result a small new organism is produced which we call as embryo. And this embryo later then gradually grow. The part of the plant which contains this embryo that later grows to become a seed. So the seed basically contains the embryo inside us. And we all know what are seeds. Seeds are those parts of the plants which are capable of giving rise a new plant. So how are seeds formed? Seeds are also formed from flowers and seeds contain the embryo. And these seeds, when watered properly, given proper sunlight, these seeds give rise to a new plant. So that is how sexual reproduction takes place, happens in case of plants. So when you talk about the flower, flower is nothing but a modified shoot. Shoot system, the part of the plant which grows above the soil. So that shoot. Now this seed is capable of giving rise to a new plant. When you take the seed and plant it, what happens? The seed gives rise to a new root and a new shoot. And that's how when you keep watering it over a period of time, it continues to grow and it becomes a big plant. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. 
Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.